My name's Jim Mackey and I am the uh, co-chair of the Biaza Animal Behaviour and Training Working Group. Um, I'm being joined today by Joe Mason, who is our Education and Training Advisor. And we're here to talk about the future of Biaza Animal Training as we believe and see it. And it's through the education and development of our animal care staff. And we're going to talk you through that uh, right now. So there's lots and lots of training going on um, throughout the 120 plus Biaza zoos. Uh, an aquarium uh, in Britain and Ireland. This is a, an example here of Kim Wilkins, who's uh, our co other co-chair of the group up at Yorkshire Wildlife Park with one of her polar bears. Uh, I'm going to play a quick video just to give you a kind of idea of the, the breadth and diversity of training that's going on um, around zoos. I'm using examples from my own um, organisation, which is the Zoological Society of London. We've got London and Whipsnade Zoo. Here's an African wild dog having a blood sample taken under trained behaviour. Um, lots of flagship animals get trained all the time. Gorillas, sea lions, elephants, you know, the big cats. And sometimes the, the smaller mammals are a little bit less represented. So I wanted to share this video trained by Tom at London Zoo of, uh, of his meerkat training programme. One of the things that we really want to encourage is the use of uh, animal training as a science-based and proactive management tool rather than being something reactive you know we need to move this animal from one zoo to another therefore we train it we should have a foundation of behaviors trained um, for as many animals as we can because then it's less intrusive uh, generally um, so in this example here none of these meerkats were, were trained for transportation it was a proactive measure in case they need to because after all in zoos we're always having to move our animals from one zoo to another or even to a different enclosure. This is a non-emergency anaesthetic event with a, 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 a emperor tamarind in a specially designed induction device. And here we have an example of a, a, a not a mammal. And I think that it's important to, to say that uh, throughout our work with the Biaza group, we're trying to encourage the use of training with uh, across the taxonomic groups. Here we have a, a couple of rural partridges. Uh, that Thomas was training up at Whipsnade, uh, again, in a proactive way, just uh, as, a, as a form of uh, good management, good proactive management. This is Tom again, um, training an African dwarf crocodile. Uh, you can see the interest that training actually um, shows with our, with our visitors as well. It's absolutely brilliant for them. Um, I love this video, a very ferocious little creature uh, showing some recall. That was an important program because that this animal was hiding in the bottom of the pond along with its conspecific. So that trained behavior allowed them to do physical and uh, uh, physical exam. Uh, this is Heather, who's on our group as one of our aquarium advisors, along with Graham at the Deep uh, from the National Marine Aquarium. And here's some arapaima in a large mixed species exhibit. And we trained these animals um, just for simple target feeding, um, target training and feeding. And that was uh, enabled, enabled us to manage these, uh, this species and this tank really effectively and reduce conflict between the species. So the, the point is that it's for all animals. Training is a, bit, is a, is a scientific um, law. It's a natural law of uh, science that we're trying to promote the use of across all the taxonomic groups. Um, so a brief potted history of uh, where we've come from. So in 2015, um, the David Field, Kirsten and Ross, who are um, all part of the, Bi the Biaza Living Collections Committee and the, and the wider Biaza group, um, helped us form the Animal Training Focus Group. Now, a focus group essentially is a short term thing. Um, once the, the, the thing that you're focusing on is solved, then you stop that group. Well, of course, animal training just grew and grew and grew. And it's such a big discipline. And in fact, it was becoming more you know, obvious that it was just one part of good behavioral husbandry. And the more workshops that we held and um, the more people that we spoke to, we realized that we needed to incorporate training in a larger group, which became the Animal Behaviour and Training Working Group in 2017. Uh, this is what it looks like at the moment. We have one unfilled post because Kim Wilkins, our current co-chair, was the mammal uh, liaison. So we're looking for a new mammal liaison. Please apply and we'll get the advertising into our Facebook group. Um, we have experts in all the different taxonomic groups. We have representatives on the welfare and research committees, vet advisors and enrichment advisors. Now, one of our main strategic goals was the education and development of uh, animal care staff. And that's where Joe Mason, my co-presenter today, uh, came into, into the equation. We worked together on a couple of projects down at Sparshalk College when she was teaching there. And uh, Joe is an animal training consultant and qualified lecturer with nearly two decades of experience. And this is gonna, was proving really valuable when we started to develop 
our goals in terms of education. Now she's taught thousands of students, including myself, and this is me attending one of her brilliant um, chicken training workshops. Now it doesn't matter what type of animals you train in the zoo, um, chickens always uh, are brilliant ways to, to fine tune and give you precision in terms of your training skills, your mechanical skills of training. So our vision ultimately was to promote the use of best practice in animal care um, through, its, through our application of behaviour management. And um, we realised that animal training is a significant part of good behaviour based husbandry, but it's just one part of it and we want to make that really clear. However, we do feel that um, although there was tons of training going on all, the, all around the different zoos um, up and down the country, um, there was different standards and there wasn't a real formalised approach to it. And we wanted to try and set some standards um, and to, to encourage the use of science-based training, removing animal training from the stigmas of the past uh, with its associations with things like circuses. We wanted to make sure that it was all evidence-based approaches. Um, and we wanted to encourage individual collections and keepers to think about that. So this is just one example of a bit of simple evidence-based animal training. Here we have a couple of zebras at ZSL London Zoo that had to be darted uh, for vaccinations. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, when the dart goes in, there's a, a significant physiological reaction, um, a big behavioral change within these uh, pair of zebras. By the way, they have to be shut in because um, we're quite close to um, roads and canals at London Zoo. And you can see there's a big reaction to the darts being uh, fired there. Exactly the same procedure, vaccination event for this animal can be trained, uh, you know, can be given under trained behaviour and that's what it looks like. Now, just from, uh, just from us looking at this, we can see very clearly that there's a significant change in terms of what that means to the animal. Um, but we wanted to show that through uh, an evidence-based approach. So we did um, a simple ethogram. Uh, we had a vet nurse intern working at ZSL at the time who did the ethograms and showed that uh, the animal that was darted had a couple of undesired behaviours creeping in just after darting, biting and kicking, which, could, which you could see clearly in the video. But more importantly, we wanted to study the physiological reaction in, internally, which was the respiratory rate, so breaths per minute. And as you can see by those simple stats, it increased by nearly fivefold. In contrast, the hand injection ground of Domino showed no um, undesired behaviours at all, as you could see again in the video, and a negligible increase in respiratory rate, which proves really clearly that um, there is a significant beneficial impact to training for hand injection. Other studies have uh, proved this as well uh, throughout Brit Biaza zoos and we want to encourage more of those. So um, how did we set about achieving our vision? Well, our vision, uh, our, our objectives were in education clearly, that's one of our most important ones, but we also had other ideas, you know, research and regional initiatives like the Scottish Animal Training Group that we supported along with communication. Um, but for it all, we were constantly thinking about this scheme, this accreditation scheme. How can we get people that are looking after animals in zoos better at training animals and following simple standards that are set out um, uh, through regulation? Now we found out really that there is no regulation for animal training in the UK and that's something that the Animal Behaviour Training Council are trying to address. So we partnered with them in 2016 and um, we developed a relationship in order to become practitioner members. On top of that, we, we carried on with our education and practical workshops, which we've done loads of. We've supported tons of these um, species specific stuff, um, domestic animals and calatrichids, you name it. And we've had support from um, all of our members uh, on, on our Facebook group and, uh, and beyond. Mm -hmm fantastic uh, support with that. Now they all feature your classic things in conferences, things like uh, network opportunities and guest speakers, but we always focus on the practical components. We also supported a um, behavior management fund and this was uh, funded by our workshops. A small amount of profit that we put into our behavior management award um, went to Belfast Zoo who had an enrichment session with Mark Kingston Jones, our enrichment advisor. And then Joe Mason got to go down to Coombe Martin, who won the um, training award with tons of equipment for them to start their training programs and did a workshop. Now, we got a video a few weeks after um, they, the completion of that uh, workshop to show how they would started their training. Now, bearing in mind, there was little or no training going on um, prior to those workshops and the, the, the winning of that. Uh, behavior management award and so this just shows you some really simple stuff that they started to do 
on the back of learning from Joe and having the equipment in place um, to, to facilitate their starting a decent program. Here we have some suckers in a nice recall behavior with some ring-tailed lemurs. Another part of our um, strategy was to create guidelines, which uh, we had brilliant support um, from external science, scientific advisors, um, international help as well with that, with editing and help from the ABTC, um, along with great support from the Biaza office. And we published those in 2019 and they refer back to EASA standards and also the Secretary of State uh, standards of modern zoo practice. And they are available on the Biaza website. Uh, we thank everyone who contributed to the guidelines, um, especially people that contributed cool pictures like these, especially the one at the bottom, which was called getting all your ducks in a row, apparently. Um, okay, so it all comes back to this. It comes back to our status as uh, practitioner members of the Animal Behaviour Training Council, which was awarded to us last year. <laughs> and I'm going to hand over to Joe to talk you through what that means to Biaza as an organisation now that we are officially practitioner members. Okay, over to you, Joe. Excellent. Thanks, Jim. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Jim? I can hear you, Joe. Carry Christoph on. Christoph can hear me. He's nodding. Brilliant. Okay, thank you, Jim. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited actually to be able to come and speak to you guys today. And it's, it's I think for Jim and I, it's been been a long four years of ups and downs and, and kind of, you know, misunderstandings and what do we need to do. But finally, we've got there with the scheme, which is really, really exciting. And I think in terms of moving animal training forward in the zoo industry, it's so, so important that we've got this scheme off the ground. So, and as, as Jim said, part of that really was to become... Um, a practitioner organisation of the ABTC or Animal Behaviour Training Council. So as Jim also mentioned, there's currently um, the animal training industry, whether it's in zoos, whether you're a dog trainer, is actually currently unregulated. So in 2013, the ABTC was set up to try and standardise the approach um, to animal training. So what they have produced is a very detailed set of standards. Um, and part of what we had to do, Jim and I um, spent so long doing, was actually looking at what those standards entailed and how we can then create a scheme for Biasa members, zookeepers, to come onto our scheme and, and meet those standards um, to allow them to become accredited trainers at level three. So the, uh, the overarching umbrella of term, really, I guess, for the ABTC is that they're setting, overseeing and monitoring standards of professional competence in the practice of behaviour therapy um, and training of animals. So we're very, very focused at the moment um, at level three, so the level three animal trainer accreditation scheme. So that is what we've created. So who is the course for? So we, again, it's, it's, it's a level three um, a standard course. Um, essentially, it is for practitioners. So it's for people on the grounds, working with animals, training animals on a daily basis or weekly basis. So this is, what the this is who the course is designed for. But we're also very, very aware that not actually everybody working in a zoo has got an academic background behind them. So we had to cater for those people as well. So with that, the design of our entry requirements for the scheme are either the DIMSA, so the Diploma um, Zookeeper undertaken at Sparshot College, or a foundation science degree in a related subject area with a minimum of two years working um, with animals or train, well, specifically training them within a collection. That's brilliant if you've gone down the academic route into zookeeping, however, not everybody has, and we're very, very aware of that. So we also will take and accept um, applicants from people with five years or more experience working within a Biasa collection and training animals within their collection. So we, we hope that we've managed to actually cater for most people working in the zoo at the ground level. So again, we've spent an awful lot of time looking again, cross, cross, cross mapping all of the standards from the ABTC, and then really importantly for us, actually looking at how do we deliver this? So I think actually for us, um, <laughs> In, in a way, COVID has been quite a positive thing for the development of this scheme because we've all suddenly become experts as we are today 
in online delivery. So we've we've harnessed that. And what we've now managed to achieve is a programme that exclusively can be delivered online, which opens up the scheme to far more people than if we were, we were teaching um, face to face in house. So the course will be delivered um, via Teams, MS Teams, over 36 weeks. So um, because I've been teaching for so long, my brain only ever works in academic years. So the, the scheme will follow the same pattern. So it will, it will uh, launch mid-September and we will finish in July. So we will follow the, the academic calendar for the, the setup of this course. There will be weekly taught sessions, um, on average lasting about an hour and a half. What we've also had to look at is obviously Jim and I both work full time as well. So we are delivering this scheme um, around our day jobs essentially. Um, so mine at South Devon, obviously Jim at London Zoo uh, and Whipsnade. So, an hour and a half a week online via MS Teams, predominantly taught by Jim and myself, but we also will have guest lecture slots, um, slots in there as well. So we all already have um, Annette Peterson um, from Copenhagen Zoo who has agreed to come and do some um, online teaching. So it will be a phenomenal course in terms of what you get um, to, to train up keepers. So again, we, we're, we know that not everybody that enrolls on the course over time is going to have that academic background. So it's specifically written so that whether you have been training for 30 years or two years, actually the content that we deliver um, and the coaching that we can give virtually actually will, will, will ensure that everybody is coming out as a competent and confident trainer. So this is, um, I'm going to disclaimer here, subject to change. Um, so don't take this, 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 <laughs> this picture as gospel, but this is an outline of what your kind of each week would look like. So it's not a case for us of, of you guys signing up, uh, you know, paying you money and then we leave you to it. We feel very, very strongly that actually the money that the collections are investing in their staff, we have to give you the support and the coaching to enable you to become competent trainers. Many people already will be, um, but again, this, this programme is for anybody that has experience of training. So whether it's two years or, or above. So each week, as you can see, we will cover initially um, the learning theory, the science behind learning. Um, and then there will be um, assignment tasks that need to be undertaken throughout the year as well. So in total, there's four assignments that need to be submitted and completed. Um, but the, the initial theory sessions are a prerequisite uh, for those assessments being submitted. So we need to ensure that people that are signing up are engaging each week, that they're engaging with both Jim and myself, so that we can confidently, as, as two professionals within the industry, um, put our name to people that are kind of coming out of this scheme as a level three trainer, so we can sign them off as really competent with the ABTC accreditation. Um, so as we go through, uh, one of the, whether you noticed on there or not, um, the, the final assignment task actually is the keepers having access to train an animal within their collection. So it's essential that whoever, whoever signs up for this course um, to undertake it has institutional support because the fourth and final assessment is training a new behaviour for an animal that they have access to on a regular basis. So what they will then submit for that assessment is actually an edited video of their entire training plan program from start to finish. So we will then assess those videos um, virtually. They will present their videos virtually and um, we will be able to, um, from that, obviously interview the, the delegates as well. Now, you might think this is an absolutely crazy notion that we're going to be assessing people doing a practical okay. skill virtually. This is what I've been doing um, at various different colleges over the past 15, 16 years. Um, so at Sparschultz, um, we this is the way that we assess the final level three animal training unit. Um, and Jim was actually one of the uh, people, one of the judges that came along um, to Sparschultz and actually worked 
with our students and um, was, was part of that final assessment process for us. So it is a tried and tested method of assessment. It works very, very effectively. And we have, um, over, over the time that I've been teaching, we have you know, produced some phenomenal trainers that are now out in the early um, years of, of their um, um, career. So after the course, what happens, um, really excitingly, and this is something that I think is, is hugely important for the industry as a whole, um, and particularly namely the animal training industry, is that actually on successful completion of the course, each individual person that has been signed off by Jim and myself initially will become a registered animal trainer with the Animal Behaviour Training Council. So as far as Jim and I are aware, there is no such scheme. This is the first scheme exclusively for zookeepers that has ever been written um, in Europe. So it is a really, really, really exciting opportunity um, for both Jim and myself, but also for the Biaza community to get on board and, and to standardise training within our collections. So what does that actually mean in terms of what does that, you know, what benefit does that have for, for the collection and or the trainer um, or the keeper? They're able to use the ABTC logo um, on uh their their kind of their their personal information so cvs or whatever but also the collection is able to use that um for, for marketing as well but also part of the the accreditation process um is that actually once they have successfully achieved the course they will then have to undertake 15 hours of cpd per year now that will be monitored by the biaza office but really important because actually what we want to make sure is that the people that are successful at this course are constantly upskilling. So we know there's research, there's lots and lots of research going on at the moment. Um, it is a relatively under-researched area in terms of, um, um, you know, a kind of scientific research. So it's really important that, the, 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 that delegates are upskilling um, as much as they can every year. And with the, the requirement of 15 hours CPD, um, that may be delivered by Jim and myself, it may be linked to, to different Biasa workshops, but that will be provided, obviously um, we'll, we'll support with that, but it, that is part of the, the prerequisite to using the ABTC registered animal trainer logo. So applications are open, which is really exciting. So we finally got there. Applications are currently open, but places are limited. So we are, again, um, we all feel very strongly. So that's myself, Jim, and the Biaza office. We've worked incredibly closely um, with everybody involved. And we are really passionate about providing a really high quality scheme. So places are limited for that reason, so that Jim and I um, can support and tutor really, really closely and that we are providing the very best experience for anybody that signs up to this. Our long-term aims um, for this programme, this scheme, is to have multiple uh, keepers accredited at animal trainer level, so the level three um, standards to so animal trainer at level three. And our next project, Jim and I um, don't sit still for long, so our next project is gonna be actually creating um, another scheme so that people can become animal training instructors. So when that scheme launches, our ultimate aim will be to have one animal training instructor in every Biasa collection with several animal trainers as well. So with that rollout across the, the, a number of years, we will really start to see the standard of training um, improve because people will be able to put that science into practice. And for us, that's a real passion. Um, with that as well, what we're looking at, and we've been working um, with uh, part of the um, Biasa Research um, Committee with uh, Sparsholt College as well, and the ABTC, are looking at research projects that we can um, use and implement so that we can actually measure the success of this course. So we've got sort of two angles of, of um, research that we'll be looking at on completion of this, is actually what, what impact does it have on the people themselves? Um, you know, do we see an improvement in um, understanding and knowledge? And also, do we then ultimately see what changes do we start to see in the animals that are actually trained these new behaviours as well? So we are looking to, to collect the data 
in terms of research once this scheme is um, properly up and running in September. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, I think that gives a really good overview of what the scheme will look like. Unfortunately, um, we were going to use this as a way to advertise the course, but it's been so successful. We've had tons of applications already, but what we're going to say is um, we'll, we'll have our uh, limited uh, delegate list and then we'll work on what we're going to do going forward because this is a, a long term aim. And so we'll have more people every year and hopefully more assessors. We can roll this out a little bit more widespread um, as we go forward as well, which is great. Um, I'd just like to um, say a few thanks. First of all, a huge thanks to Joe. Um, basically, when I first started attending uh, meetings at DEFRA House for the ABTC, and I was so excited about the prospect of becoming a practitioner member and putting on this scheme, um, I was often thrown back a bit because I, I had no experience uh, in education and so even with the best will in the world we needed an expert in that field to come on board and make it happen and that's what Joe's done so I'm absolutely indebted um, to Joe for her you know endeavors in that in that area and also all the institutions that have supported her the three different colleges she's worked for since we started this process uh, the Biaza office have been absolutely brilliant they're taking on the scheme with enthusiasm and we really appreciate that especially Nikki Frankie and Kerry and of course um, all our members of the animal behavior and training working group that have supported this process and with a particular mention to Danielle Free at Marwell who's on our subgroup um, hopefully going to become our next assessor um, everyone at Fording Bridge who sponsored the course, which means that it's £100 cheaper per delegate because of their um, sponsorship. And we really, really appreciate that, made it a bit more affordable. And everyone at the ABTC, especially Anne and Val, who um, supported us in this process. Um, it's, it's just to finish off by saying that um, even though animal training is just one small part of the way that we manage our animals, it's such a growth area. And if we can be more scientific and approach it in, in a way that means that everyone who does it is thinking about it in the right way, I really believe that we can make a difference with it and, um, and really help the animals in our care. So um, thanks ever so much for everyone who listened to this. Any questions, please come back to Joe or myself and we'll try and answer them. Thanks very much indeed.